Hi, my name is Sal, and in this video we're going to be taking a measurement from a compact Rio using FPGA and Lavio NXG. Our system here is a compact Rio with the 9205 module, analog input module, that's wired to a function generator generating a sine wave. So we're going to have an application running on the FPGA target and another application running on the real-time target, and then that'll be run from a PC that's running Lavio NXG. So let's jump into Lavio. So here in the browser, we're going to start with launching a new hardware project. And here in the hardware project, you see we'll start here in System Designer in the live view. And here in the live view of System Designer, we have our Compact Rio chassis and our PC. On the Compact Rio chassis, you can see the modules that we have plugged in, a 9205 and a 9263. And then you can see here that they are running in real-time DACMX mode. So because it's a Compact Rio with DACMX, you can switch the modules between real-time and FPGA mode. For this application, we'll be using FPGA mode for the 9205, so I'll switch it here. And then you can see that the module reflects that it's in FPGA mode. The next step is to go to the design view of System Designer. The design view of System Designer is a canvas where you can document your application's hardware, as well as associate software with different hardware targets. So we'll go here to the unplaced live hardware palette and drop down our Compact Rio chassis. You'll notice that the design view hardware looks a lot like the live view hardware. You have your chassis with the modules in it, but you'll see what's added is the software buckets. This is where you would associate software with the different execution targets. So we're gonna create an application that runs on the FPGA target. So you click the plus button and application. And then what we've created now is an application document. And this is where you put your VIs and other code that's going to run on the FPGA. So let's save the project. And then we're going to create a new VI in the FPGA. And then go to the block diagram of the FPGA. And then once you get in here, it's basically regular LabVIEW code for, for writing the FPGA VI. So I can drop down a while loop. and then drop down our FPGA I.O. that we're going to be taking the measurement from the module with. So we'll drop down this read, write I.O. node, and then select the AI channel from the 9205. And you'll see here that in the right-hand configuration pane, you have the I.O. configuration for that channel. So the I.O. configuration of FPGA modules in LabVIEW and XG is baked into the I.O. node on the diagram and configured in the right rail. So this way, when you share a project or source code with somebody else, that configuration goes along with it. So we'll make sure that our module is correctly in RSE mode and measuring in the 10 volt range. And we'll create an indicator off of that. And then lastly, we want to time our loop to make sure that its I.O. is being sampled at the right rate. And we'll drop down a microsecond loop timer and we'll set it to 10 microseconds. So it'll give us a 100K sample rate. Okay, so the next step is to get our data back up to the real-time host. And to do that, we need to create a resource collection document inside of the FPGA application. So we go back to the FPGA application document and create a new resource collection. And you can think of the resource collection as a bag that you put your FIFOs and registers and other FPGA resources in. And then when you share code or share your project, those resources go along in that bag. So we'll create a FIFO, target to host FIFO because we're sending data back up to the host. And then again, in the right-hand configuration pane, that's where we configure the FIFO. So we're going to make it a numeric, floating point, single precision. And then back on the FPGA diagram, we're going to drop the FIFO write node to write the data into the FIFO. So we go into the data communications palette, FIFO write, and then we drop down a reference to select which FIFO we're going to be using and wire it up. Okay, so now that we have our FPGA AVI written, the next step is to build it. But before you build it, one thing you can do is you can simulate it. So in LabVIEW FPGA and NXG, the run button actually simulates the VI. So I can click the run button to simulate the VI. And what this will do is run it on your development PC in simulation mode. 
So now that it's simulating, you can drop probes and look at the data on the probes in the debugging pane to see how things are working. And this will give you an opportunity to debug or test out your app before you go through the process of building it. So I'll stop the simulation and then go back to the FPGA application component. And this is the object that you build to build the FPGA bit file. So you go up to the build button and click build. And then you'll see the build starting in the build queue. Once the build gets to the synthesizing phase, you can click on it and open up the build document and see the progress along the way. And then when this is done, you'll see more information about how the build worked out. OK. Then we wait for 10 minutes. OK, now that the build is completed, you can see in the build queue that it says complete. And then you get all the information about the resource utilizations of the FPGA bit file here in the build document. So the next step is to build the real-time VI that's going to download and run the FPGA VI. So to do that, we go back to System Designer, and then on the real-time controller, create an application. And then in the RT application, we'll make a VI. go to the block diagram, and then we're going to drop down the FPGA host interface nodes to download and run the FPGA VI. In LabVIEW NXG in the palette, you can hold down the control key and select multiple nodes and drop them on the diagram in sequence. So we'll download, close. On the FPGA open reference node, you select run FPGA bit file on hardware, and then you select the bit file that you're going to run. Pick which Rio you want to run on, and then wire everything up. So as you're wiring, you can see the green FPGA host interface wire goes to the read-write FPGA control node, and then from in there, you can pick which FPGA controls you want to read. So we'll read the data, and also the loop iteration to give us some status on how the FPGA VI is running. Okay, and then we'll drop this in a loop, and then handle the errors for stopping the loop. OK, and then the next part will be to drop a loop that will read the DMA FIFO. So we'll put another while loop there on the diagram, and then go into the FPGA host interface palette, into the DMA FIFO's palette, and grab the FIFO read. Drop the FIFO read down there, and then connect up the reference wire. And then on the FIFO read node, in the configuration pane, select which FIFO we're reading, which is the target to host FIFO. Pick how many samples. And then we'll handle the errors coming out of it as well. Give it a stop button. So we'll go to the front panel and drop down the controls and indicators we have. We can drop them down one by one, or we can use the place all function to just drop them all at once. And then for reading the data from the DMA FIFO, I want to use a graph. So I'll go and drop down a graph. And then I'll set the access to be plus or minus 10. Not auto scale. And then lastly, we'll go to the unplaced items tray and drop down the graph onto the block diagram and wire it up. And then from here, we can go to the front panel and run the VI. Now you can see the data coming in from the 9205 module, the sine wave graphed here on the graph. And then you can go turn the knob on the function generator to change the frequency and amplitude and see it reflect there in the VI. OK, so now we've configured the Compact Rio and System Designer, made an FPGA application to read the data, put it up through a DMA FIFO, and then gotten the data back on the host through the RT FIFO. Thank you for watching.